So I wanted to do a quick video about the mock boolean toolkit and the judicious use of instancing. You'll find this can actually save you a lot of time when you leverage it correctly. And I also wanted to, uh, I to show you a couple of workflow tips and things about the kit you might not have realized. So let's take a dive in and check it out. Oh, and a quick note before we get going, you're an astute viewer, so you've obviously noticed that the background is different. We no longer have the green. That's because it's been hot in North Carolina this summer, and I'm, I'm, it's been hot in North Carolina. So that combined with the fact that the HVAC system in this condo was installed back in the 80s, I think, and it's kind of uneven. So the upstairs is warmer than the downstairs. So we made the decision that to make the summer more comfortable, we're going to move the offices downstairs. So that's what we did. So that's why the, that's why the background's different. Uh, you probably also noticed that the text in the posters is backwards. That's because I mirror my webcam. And the reason for that is that uh, when I'm doing videos and I want to point the stuff in the screen, uh, I don't want to have to think about you know, what direction my hand is pointing this up. So this works better for me. This is actually pointing to the spot that my finger is. So there's the nerdy reasons for all of that stuff. And uh, now we'll get into the quick tip. So to get started, I've I've made a simple mop boolean setup here. I've just taken a torus and I subtracted a cylinder from the one edge. Now there's a number of ways you can duplicate this cylinder around the outside, right? We could do a radial array, which has the disadvantages we're trying to get rid of here. That has the disadvantage of if I edit the one cutout, it doesn't affect the other ones. Yeah, you know, we could also use a mesh operation to do that radial array, which would be good, but trying to merge that in with the mop boolean hierarchy might get tricky. And frankly, I don't like most of the mesh operations the way they're implemented. They're very clicky and they're kind of tedious to work with. So we're going to uh, use instancing instead. So to instance this is super straightforward. We just select that mesh item. We fire off uh, the instance radial array, shut the tool down. And now it's as you would expect. You have your mop sub, you have your instances of your mop sub. And now if, if you edit that original mop sub item, or sorry, that original mesh item, you know, all the instances update in the exact way you would expect them to. Now you'll notice this is already getting a little chuggy and it's just, you know, that's just the, how things are. So the way that I would end up editing this sort of thing is I would, so if I cut that out from that mop sub, you know, that kills all the instances too. Well, it kills the polygons from them. They're still here and live and we'll get to why that's cool here in a second. So I'll jump up, I'll throw that subtractive item into its own mesh item. And then while it's sitting in here, we can go ahead and we can edit this a little bit. We can say, well, and maybe he pushes out and in a bit, we'll harden up that loop. We'll take this top loop and pull it in a bit. Maybe grab the whole thing, squish it down and be like, okay, all right, that's the shape I was actually after. Cut those polygons out, go back to my mop sub and paste them back in. Now, now that cut comes back and all the instances are updated at the same time, just the way you would expect it to be. And none of that is particularly magical, but it's really just a way to reinforce, you know, once again, that the mesh op booleans are just working with mesh items. So you can do all the usual things with them and uh, really unlock some powerful workflows. Now, when it comes to instant instancing the entire mop boolean oper operation or mesh or procedural item or whatever it is, your first inclination is to select this item right here and right click it you know, and go to instance hierarchy. So instance hierarchy and we drag this one over and it, this is typically the result I get. It doesn't work the way I expect it will work. And I don't actually know the technical reason why, but my shapes are all here, but you know, this is not really the same as this one. There's something broken somewhere. So I will delete that. 
Uh, the way that I found does work uh, it, it, is if you go inside uh, the, uh, the mop item itself and right click the mop build item and instance that hierarchy that I find works very well so I can drag him over here now drop that now this is in item mode this is actually very fast to work with and I can copy this around to anywhere I want to copy it around to well it, fast is a relative term but you know we work with what we've got so if I put that at the origin and I say again that what I want to do let's give this a try if I do an instance radial array drop that now I've got that same mop boolean copied around you know, to multiple places within my scene but since we did you know we have instancing happening here any changes I make to this one are reflected in all of them you, you can see they're all updating there you know as I'm dragging this thing around so you can see where that gets powerful let's say you have a uh, a wheel rim you want to have on all four tires of the car or you want to have a I don't know a bolt head or whatever you're going to be doing just know that it is possible to properly do an instance uh, within your mop boolean item and have it work the way you would you know, ideally want it to so that's it for uh, uh, booleans and instancing uh, pay particular attention to the workflow where we cut and copy and paste polygons from mesh items to temp items where we work on them and then copy them back again that'll save you a ton of time because uh, you're not eating that live boolean penalty that you sometimes end up eating once the mesh gets a little more complicated so have fun with that and i'll see you next time